Hello, everybody. I'm Emmy Award-winning journalist Steve Jefferson, and welcome to Meet the Artist 2021 number 33. We are excited to highlight some of this year's artists and authors and their works. Please join us as we glean some information about this year's artists. My name is uh, Ken Skelton. Um, I'm a visual artist. I'm also a, a, a blues musician. But for Meet the Artist this year, uh, I am uh, participating in the visual aspects of it. Uh, I am a, uh, uh, I paint with acrylics. I also uh, uh, an illustrator with pencil and uh, construction paper. Pretty much uh, covered the whole gambit of, uh, of the visual art piece. I go back to the very first Meet the Artist with, uh, with Tony Radford. Um, uh, two years ago, uh, I participated in the, uh, on the musician's end, uh, our group, uh, uh, in rare form played, uh, uh, Kenny Hartman and friends. We played at the, at the downtown library. Um, uh, my come from a, uh, a family of visual artists and, uh, and, and pretty much, uh, love to express myself through, uh, through music and through other visual arts. As you can see, the pictures behind me are, are some of my mother's work. Uh, um, she uh, has inspired me. Uh, this piece right here, I remember her painting it when I was five years old. Uh, this one uh, when I was a teenager, uh, growing up here in Indianapolis. You know, sometimes you have to you have to really kind of create your own field. With influx of uh, of the internet, uh, you, you have you have to really kind of go out there and uh, and find your market, make your market. Uh, the market is not going to come to you. You have to go to the go to the people. Over the over the past thirty years, uh, like I said, with Tony Radford and I, uh, we had taken what we call taking the art to the people. We created uh, groups like uh, Indie Renaissance, uh, uh, Skelton and Radford, uh, Meet the Artist, and uh, just have to you have to create your own venue to get your art out there and to the people. Uh, that, along with coupling it with music, it uh, makes for uh, pretty good all around event and where people are exposed to music, also see your art. And, uh, and within that, uh, that, that uh, festive atmosphere, you know, hopefully you can sell some works. Art entertains, uh, um, it, it, it's great stimulus. It, it, it expresses, uh, it also, uh, it teaches. Uh, coming away from, from uh, uh, Viewing, viewing the works that I have, like I said, I hope it 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 it, uh, it provokes thought in the in the viewer and wants to know more about the the individual or or the subject matter in which uh, I'm, I'm trying to come across. Uh, Sonny Boy Williamson, uh, one of my heroes in the terms of blues. I kind of like uh, with my art. I kind of infuse uh, art with education. I try to educate while entertaining. Uh, Sonny Boy Williamson, uh, which I did that in uh, on the computer it was through a paint shop. Uh, uh, paint, well, actually paint pad. It was something I was sketching around, and I said, oh, I started fleshing it out, and, and it looked, looked pretty good. I'm putting together a series of uh, blues musicians uh, through the arts and, and trying to hopefully be able to put together the book. I retired this year. Uh, I uh, decided to go ahead and, and focus back into my art. Um, and which now being retired is uh, they will give me that, uh, that that opportunity and the time to actually do that and uh, to kind of uh, look inward to find out exactly what I want to do with my art. Uh, I definitely want to take it to, to the streets again, take it to uh, uh, public, teach younger individuals coming up uh, to uh, to express themselves and find out more about their selves uh, through their art. I am Sharon Mason. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. I am an author and I'm an entrepreneur. So I've got a couple of different businesses that I've launched and I love helping people to create the lives that they want. So my first book is Marriage Ain't for Punk. And with being a licensed marriage and family therapist, it touches on that. It talks about how if you're not willing to deal with your relationship repelling 
attitudes, behaviors, and characteristics, it's going to be very difficult to have a healthy relationship. So it absolutely touches on my field, as well as my second book, which is Even Boss Ladies Need a Break. Because as ladies, sometimes we put ourselves on the back burner and we don't take care of ourselves and prioritize our health. And that book is all about self-care and self-love. So, yes, it's definitely within my field, um, relational, mental, emotional health. So the first book was actually Mary Jane for Punk. And my husband and I were actually just walking through the park, having a conversation. And I actually said, you know, Mary ain't for Punk. And he said, you should write that. That's the way that it happened. And so he planted that seed, and I started it from that point forward. Um, I think I've always enjoyed writing in some form. I uh, love English in school, but it was just a positive outlet for me in order to get those ideas and those thoughts out. I've seen and heard a lot about the Mephiotis program. And I wanted people to be exposed to my work as well as an author. And I thought this would be a great way to bring that to the people of Indy and um, worldwide. This is my first time participating in the Meet the Artist. And I'm excited and happy uh, to have been invited and looking forward to the experience. When I think about Mary Jane for Punks, I want them to take away different ways in which they can look at themselves look inwardly rather than looking at the next person and just say, what is it that I need to work on in order so that I can be the best partner possible? So they can have healthy relationships. That's the end goal. And then also with Even Boss Ladies Need a Break, I want them to take from it ways in which they can put their self-care on the front burner, take care of themselves so they don't have burnout, stress, overwhelm, they can prioritize their mental, emotional, spiritual, physical health. I just want people to take from my work just a way in order to be able to have the life that they desire. And of course, that looks a little bit different from everyone, but I believe within, within the book of Mary Day Punk, even my studies need a break, that there's something um, for everyone. So dive in, have fun. I've got humor within the book, and I believe that it can definitely be a positive impact on the reader's life. Hi, my name is Shayla Williams, um, and I currently work with oil and acrylic. Uh, more oil than acrylic now. I just like the way that it blends, um, especially when I'm doing my portrait work. I um, currently do a lot of portrait work. Uh, sometimes I do abstracts and that's what I use my acrylic uh, paint for, but mainly uh, portraits. So as a kid, my grandma had this craft room and she had all this acrylic paint, all these different crafts, these floral crafts, all these things. And I remember going in there and just being like, man, this is so cool. Um, and so at that point I started to draw a little bit. Um, you know, I was a kid, so I was using crowns and markers. Um, and as I got older, I was like, man, I really like to sketch. Um, so I started just sketching different things, different portraits, different, you know, sceneries that I would see. Um, and after I had my second son, I was working part time. And so I kind of was like, well, maybe I should start painting. And so I picked it up as a hobby. And this was about seven years ago. And it kind of just grew from there. Indianapolis has been awesome um, as far as a place where I can get my work out there? Uh, am I the best at really utilizing those resources? Not always. Um, and I, I have to do a better job at that definitely if I want to um, progress in my art career. But um, being from Kansas, um, there's definitely more of a market here for the arts. This is actually my first year uh, in Meet the Artist. So I'm super excited about that. Um, my pieces that I'm submitting um, for this show are going to be uh, portrait pieces um, of different levels of, we talked about quarantine, um, just those feelings through uh, the quarantine, actually the pandemic, everything that's, that's happened uh, this year. So being a black woman in America um, with all the social injustices um, and the things that are going on now, uh, those are things that I've always seen. Um, they, they weren't something that, you know, was necessarily new to me. 
Um, there are th things that we're seeing now more on the news um, because of social media and smartphones. But I feel like I've always knew that those things were out there. So they've always kind of influenced my art in um, various ways. When I do a lot of black women in my portraits, um, I think one piece I have, it's called Quarantine Sundays. And um, it's a woman in um, a fur coat in her living room. Uh, the living room kind of looks like it's from the 1970s. And it's just that feeling of just, I'm here. I would use an artist as somebody who's definitely inspired me in my work. It'd be Kahindi Wiley um, because he does portrait work, but his portrait work is nothing like I've ever seen. It's just, here are these portraits, but it's the background that always gets me. Each one is so intricate and different and beautiful. And when I do my work, I don't want people just to see, like I said, the portrait. I want them to also look at everything you know, that's going on around as well. So there might be a symbol or uh, maybe the person is uh, making a gesture over here. Or maybe you see something on a curtain um, that you can pull from that and it can make you think, oh, you know, I can relate to that in some way, shape or form, just something small, maybe insignificant to the next person, but to you, it's like, okay, that makes sense. So I just want um, people who, you're, who are viewing the artwork to just really look at it. Don't, you know, when you're first seeing the portrait, you look at a face, right? You're looking at the face. But for me, I want you to look at the things that are also in the portrait and, and why are they in there and how, you know, how does that make you feel? Hello, my name is Jonathan Southern. I'm also known as Jay South. I am an heirloom portrait artist. And the medium I work with is graphite pencil, color pencil, and mixed media. So the word heirloom, is, it means a valuable object that has belonged to a family for several generations. So um, kind of in the past, affluent families would have portraits done of their family members, their loved ones, their friends. So what I do as an heirloom portrait artist is I capture um, the family member or the loved one or the friend in portrait. And then that lasts as a, a family heirloom or a memory for them to hang on their wall. Mainly photo reference is what I work from. So a person will give me a photo of their family member or friend. And then I take that and I will um, put a composition together and draw that portrait from that photo reference. Well, I've always loved art, of course, but uh, I would say my senior year in high school um, is when I started to draw people. I would draw cartoons and things before that, but I started to really draw people and I had an interest in drawing people and persons and subjects. So that's where the interest started. And I actually, um, I entered a few contests and, you know, it measured out that I was okay doing it. So uh, I wanted to start drawing people and that's how this, this really started. Um, as far as Meet the Artist, I found out about it uh, through Tony Radford a long time ago, I would say 1996 or so. And I always wanted to enter it. So this is really my first time entering Meet the Artist. So what you'll see in this exhibit from me is uh, the first one is of Oscar Robertson. It's entitled The Big O, and it's inspired by uh, the history he has in Indianapolis. Um, my father and him, they both went to Crispus Attics. So there's a, a dedication to him in that portrait. It captures a memoir of him. Uh, the other two pieces you'll see will be Men of R&B and Soul, which is a collection of portraits of different R&B singers, soul singers uh, throughout the past to present. The third piece you'll see will be women of R&B and Soul. And you'll also see the same, a memoir of various portraits, a collection of women who were in R&B and Soul. With the pandemic uh, last year and, and continuing on, I would say it's affected me as an artist in really a positive way. Um, being inside more, it's helped me to kind of rediscover what I want to create and how I can inspire people through my art. 
um, drawing various people. And it really helped me to focus on uh, what I love, you know, the people I love, my friends and family and how important that is to me, how I value that. So I started drawing those people and it really helped me to create more artwork. As far as inspiration, um, I, my, my family, my father, my brothers, we all have artistic ability. Um, I mentioned in my senior year in high school, there was an art teacher, his name is Wendrell Price. And the interesting thing, he's actually, he's actually gonna be one of the artists in the Meet the Artists this year. But he, he really inspired me. He gave me the technique and the various professional tools to kind of raise the bar on my artwork. And it's exciting to be in the same uh, exhibition with him. Okay, uh, my name is Wendrell Price. Uh, I was born in Russellville, Kentucky in 1945. I uh, went to Tech High School and I majored in art well, all four years I was there. I graduated from Tech in 1963. Then I went to Heron School of Art when it was on right off of 16th in Pennsylvania. I consider myself a fine artist at heart. I like drawing and painting. Uh, my favorite uh, media is acrylic paints, and Prismacolor pencils and charcoal pencils. I was at Heron from 1963 to 1967. And uh, the way I chose my favorite medium is like, of course, we had uh, painting classes and art classes and all different media. And that's when I was introduced to oil paints. And just personally, I preferred a fast drying paint. And that's why I lean more toward acrylics. When I was looking for a job in the commercial art field, I just started working as a substitute teacher. And um, as a substitute, the last, I did it for five years before I got a full-time job at Tech in 1973. Uh, so I was just uh, working as a substitute teacher in a lot of different areas. But when I noticed when I, when I worked in an art room that uh, I was just attracted to that. I did retire after being at Tech High School for 35 years in 08. Uh, I never really stopped working. Uh, last four years, I've been working for um, Mr. Law at Washington High School as an art teacher. So if I was uh, a fine artist that still wasn't working, I feel like I would be doing much more artwork, but uh, you know, with the pandemic, especially and the way things are in IPS, uh, me teaching art classes is a full time job and it's kind of hard for me to, you know, like paint every day or draw, or draw every day or think about pieces. So recently I just got um, a degree in the integrated studio practices in May, but I took a narrative imaging class and all three of the pieces that I've, well, a couple of the pieces that I'm putting in this Meet the Artics exhibit is some of the pieces that I did for my class in narrative imaging. As long as I can remember, I like to draw. When I was younger, I draw, I drew, you know, Batman and Superman was around. <laughs> I drew from comic books because that was what important to me. And of course I went through the civil rights movies. I'm 76 years old. And, and at the time I was drawing uh, images that reflected, you know, black pride. Uh, dashikis and my heritage. Uh, and then after that, I was um, making social statements with my artwork. But more recently, what's most important to me today is my relationship with God. So a lot of my artwork is reflecting what's most important to me now. Uh, one of the pieces that I'm going to put in is, uh, is the baptism of Jesus Christ by John the Baptist in the River of Jordan. And then uh, one of the pieces that I did in my narrative imaging classes was called uh, Can Happen. But what I was trying to express in that, I have a Bible being squeezed in a vice. And in my opinion, you know, society and sometimes government is trying to squeeze faith-based concepts out of our society. And that's what the Bible being squeezed, but I'm, what I know from what, what I believe is that like that can't possibly happen. All of my, my students that they had me in class, even though it was art related, that they that we did some things together, but the most important thing, bar 
even more important than the relationship we have with art was our relationship with one another. I believe that the two, the most important thing in our lives is our relationship with other people. Art, music, any other thing is secondary to that. My relationship with John and Sullivan is our relationship just because we care about each other and I care about him. And it just so happens that we connect with art. And the same thing with anybody that I come into, I want that to be the most important thing, important thing in my classroom is that you realize that I care about you. Because there's a statement in education, students don't care what you know until they know that you care. Art is secondary to me, to my relationship. When I retire, I want to invite people that have, have been a positive influence on my life like some of my former students or, you know, some of the teachers, you know, the, the people that I meet that just help me. I need it. I need it help and everybody needs help, but I, people have a relationship with me in the way that I try to have a relationship with others. We have some great artists this year, as you can see. Make sure you stop by Central Library and some of our neighborhood branches to view the exhibits.